Welcome to Sarah and the Bee, and I have a great story to tell today. I used to live with my friend's family, and every day I'd take the dog for a walk, and we would like to mix it up. So sometimes we'd go by the lake, and sometimes we'd go by this little farm down the way that had uh, just an array of odd animals. They had a lot of goats, and they had some llamas, and pigs, and chickens and the dog absolutely fell in love with this place. I love animals too, but as I was walking by, a little light bulb went off. They had closed the gate with zip ties. What do goats eat? Everything. And in my mind, I knew those goats were gonna eat those zip ties eventually. So fast forward to a couple of weeks later and I'm driving with the family that I was staying with at the time and we were driving past that farm and as we were driving past we noticed that one of the goats had escaped and gotten hit by a car and I was gutted because uh, instantly my mind went to those zip ties. I grabbed the dog and as fast as I could ran to the farm to investigate what had happened and maybe alert the family about the zip ties. So I get to the farm and quickly realize it wasn't a goat that got hit. Unfortunately, it was a deer. It just was kind of a smaller deer, so it kind of looked like a goat. <sighs> All right, crisis averted. Or so I thought, and here's where things get a little interesting. So I hear a bell noise behind me and I quickly turn around and there are a couple of the goats, um, not all of them, and one is literally munching on those zip ties. I ran over to the fence and I know they're not my goats, but I was like, no goat, what are you doing? You know, as if goats can understand, you know, English. So in my mind, I was going to alert the family like, hey, I think zip ties aren't the greatest idea. But then I looked next to the fence and it seemed like construction was about to happen. There was a bunch of lumber and, you know, equipment to be able to build a permanent fence. So in my mind, I kind of just left it alone. I mean, they've had this farm for a long time. So this is where things get a little more interesting. I'm left home alone one day as the family is running errands and I have this crazy cold. So all I want to do is just hang out on the couch and catch some Z's. And I'm watching a program and all of a sudden a Wendy's commercial comes on. Ah! Now magically I want a Frosty. So I quickly grab the keys and I run to the garage and I quickly rem remember the only vehicle that's left home is the Tacoma. This thing's massive and really hard to drive, or at least it is for me. And I say, hey, what the heck? I'm gonna go to Wendy's. I get there without a hitch. I get my Frosty, I get a burger, and I'm heading home. And as I'm heading home, I'm like, huh, I wonder how those goats are doing with the zip ties. And then it happens. I'm driving past the farm and all of a sudden I look over and there's a floodgate of goats coming out of the fence. They finally did it. They ate through the zip ties. I quickly slam on the brakes. I do a 180 and I quickly park in front of the house's little portico area. I'm panicked. But then I remember one thing, that if you're panicked, then animals tend to sense that. So I ran over to the goats and as calmly as I could, I tried to shoo them back into their enclosure. Do you think they listened? No. So now they're getting closer and closer to the road. Now, when I say a herd of goats, I'm not sure how many is in a herd, but I would say there was at least 10 to 12 goats. At this point, I am panicked because they are trying to move towards the road. And I'm like, no, buddies, let's go back into the enclosure. At this point, I feel a nibble on my butt. And I'm like, nope, this is not happening. This is not happening. I'm not sure if this one goat was a pygmy goat or a baby goat, 
but I was able to pick him up to get him out of harm's way and kind of toss him to the side. And as I did that, then three big goats moved towards the road. And I'm like, this is not happening. These goats are just not listening. Then this cheeky goat comes around and I found out quickly that he was the one that was trying to bite my butt. And he has a collar on and I quickly look at the name tag. Michael, who names their goat Michael? Anyways, I was able to scream out Michael and he quickly perked up and he followed me. And that's when all the herd of goats finally followed me. And they took interest in what I think is the juniper berry tree right next to the house. Whew. Okay, give me a couple of minutes. And so I quickly ran up to the stairs and I knock on the door of the house. And I'm like, your goats escaped. Your goats escaped. No one answers. And at this point, I'm in sheer panic. Am I going to have to stay with these goats until their owner returns? Do I call the cops? Do I call animal control? Who do I call? I run to the other side of the house because there were some vehicles there and I thought maybe somebody was working on the other side of the house. Nope, there's just a beaver there. Great, more wildlife. I'm not sure what made me think of this, but I run around to the back of the house and there is a sliding glass window and I'm pounding on this sliding glass window like anybody there, please come help me. And finally, I see the curtain pull back and a lady peer out and she's oddly confused as anyone possibly could be. And I'm like, your goats got out, your goats got out. And she's like, huh? And I'm like, your goats got out. And that's when it kind of hit her that, oh my God, the goats have escaped. So she tells me she's going to run to the front of the house. And in my panic, I'm like, we don't have time. So I run to the front yard. And by the time I get there, the goats aren't there. I'm like, I'm turning in circles and I'm sheerly panicked. I'm, and that's when I hear Michael's bell. These goats had managed to climb up on a picnic table that was nestled into a grove of trees and they were trying to get to the top of the juniper berries. It was a sight unlike you have ever seen. So I took a minute to admire the cuteness of these goats, but then I realized we still need to get them in their enclosure and get them safely away from the road and quickly the lady runs down the stairs and she apologizes. I actually just woke her up from a nap. She works nights and was sleeping during the day. We kind of had a chuckle for a minute and then she got serious and asked me, how did you know the goats escaped? That's when I kind of had to tell her about the zip ties. I told her, hey, my dog and I walk past here every once in a while and we noticed you fixed your fence with zip ties. She kind of chuckled for a second and then she admitted, yeah, zip ties were probably not the best idea, but they were trying to find a temporary solution while they put up the permanent fence. I kind of chuckled, but it was kind of one of those fake ones like, uh -huh, yeah, zip ties. She told me this isn't the first time that the goats escaped. So you think you would learn by now? While I was admiring the goats up on the picnic table, she had walked off to get a bucket of feed. And as she returned, those goats quickly scrambled off of that picnic table and followed her back to the barn. And I was left alone. I had so much adrenaline. I just saved a whole herd of goats. It was kind of sad. I grew attached. Slowly and reluctantly slinked off back to the car and drove the short distance home. By the time I got home, I was like, whoa, what just happened? The dog and I would still occasionally go check up on the farm. And after a while, they did replace the fence, finally with a permanent fence. And there you go. There's the story about the great goat escape.
Thank you for joining me on this episode of Sarah and the Bee. Till next time.